Welcome to the Sniff Spotlight Series, brought to you by Renewal Rehab, a dynamic therapy company that provides full service therapy for nursing homes. You'll be hearing from some of the leading nursing home professionals in the country, as well as many healthcare heroes that are sacrificing day in and day out to help your loved ones recover and come home to you. Welcome to another fantastic episode of the Sniff Spotlight Series. I'm your host, Yitz Rubin, Director of Business Development with Renewal Rehab, and I have the privilege to speak with Kelly McCullough. She is a clinical dietitian for Fresenius Medical Care. Kelly, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Hello, Yitz. How are you? Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm a clinical dietitian working with individuals who are on dialysis treatment. And that's what my main focus is. I work with people who have uh, health conditions that are related to their renal failure in most cases. They have high blood pressure, diabetes, um, heart disease, a variety of things. And we deal with helping them lose weight so that they can get a transplant. Uh, we help them uh, get their labs in, in line so that when the transplant team looks at their application on paper, that it's something that they feel like, oh, this would be a good person for a transplant. Um, so that's one of our big goals. Um, but my, uh, my focus day in and day out is motivating the patients, motivating them to do the types of things that they need to do to eat the way they need to eat and to take their medications the way that they should so that they can live the most uh, healthy life that they can while on dialysis. Dialysis takes so much time for them. They're at the center three times a week, uh, about four hours. Well, by the time you do the, the things you do before your treatment and after your treatment, you're there for about five hours total. And so that's a lot of time to spend. And so they're spending that time, plus it adjusts their lives. Some of them still are working. And so that's a big adjustment for them to have to put that into their day. Um, and so I try to help them make it as easy, an easy transition for them and make it as uh, conducive to their life as possible. So uh, Kelly, can you tell us a little bit about what the, during COVID-19, how has that impacted you caring for the well, patients and some of the safety precautions? Yes, uh, what we do is we screen every single person before they, patient before they come in. We didn't allow anybody that wasn't a patient to come in the building. Um, and the patients were screened each and every time they came in with um, a questionnaire and we took their temperature. Um, and if they had any symptoms at all, we would move them to a different uh, room where they would be evaluated. And then if they needed to be sent out, there was a separate dialysis center where they could go while they were positive, where they could still have their dialysis. Um, so we didn't have them come in the inside the clinic around anybody else at all, except so, the person that was doing the screening. Right. And of course, we were in our uh, using all of our P PPE. So we had on a, a, a mask, we had on a face shield, um, a gown. We were wearing scrubs. We had on our gown, and then we wear gloves. Right. And so we made sure that each patient had a uh, the right type of mask that they could use in the center so everyone's wearing their masks and uh, keeping their distance and so we made sure we spread out the chairs in the reception area so that they weren't sitting really near each other so what about the cheerleading outfit that was totally covered <laughs> well the cheerleading outfit was so that i could help motivate the patients they, um, they, they have to take a medication every time they eat. It's called a phosphorus binder. It's supposed to help clean the phosphorus out of their system from the foods. There's phosphorus in the foods. It's a, it's a preservative in the foods. And so if you don't, the, the, the kidneys can't eliminate that anymore. So we have to use manually, we have to do that. So they have to take this medication every time they eat to get the phosphorus out of the foods and then uh, that's that's something they have to remember each time. So it's a major life change to have to remember to take medicine every time you eat. So uh, it's a big deal. 
and um, there's a lot of consequences and a lot of things that happens to the body if they if yeah. they don't take that medicine. Would you say that uh, people with uh, that that have had COVID or can COVID cause people to potentially need dialysis in the future? It it uh, that's been shown to be true. We're we're finding that because of the uh, the damage to the inside of the blood vessels that occurs in, in in during COVID. Usually, people who have lost their their kidney function. The two, the most common reason is diabetes that is uncontrolled. Not controlled diabetes, but diabetes that is uncontrolled. And then the second one is high blood pressure. And both of those things have to do with their, their vascular diseases. So um, it would make, it, and it makes sense. So when we started seeing that, when we started p- seeing people have some kidney failure, even if it was just acute kidney injury, for temporary, temporarily while they were sick, and then they regained their function after they recovered from COVID. It's not unusual. It was what it wasn't surprising to see that. Um, so that because it's it was attacking the inside lining of the blood vessel. Right. So so you're suspecting. It seems like maybe there may be in the future um, more patients needing dialysis. It's possible what really increases the need for dialysis is the fact that there's a growing number of people with uncontrolled diabetes and uncontrolled blood pressure so those are the two main factors there were some 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 consequences to COVID-19 and it wasn't surprising that those consequences occurred um, and and I'm sure we'll be seeing that as time goes by because COVID isn't going away we're gonna. We've learned how to treat it better, and we've learned more. We've learned a lot more about it, and how to treat it, and how to go about uh, preventing it, and and those kinds of things. But um, it's still it's here, and so we're going to be dealing with it. So I'm sure there are going to be people that are going to um, re- their body's going to react that way. What would you say? You being um, dealing with uh, kidney disease, hypertension, and weight control increasing in the United States. Uh, what advice would you have for patients to potentially avoid um, going on to dialysis in the future? Um, diet and lifestyle is a big part of it. So you're there saying like a- GQ? <laughs> well, it's it has <laughs> it has more to do with um, because we have so many people that. Uh, the reason that diabetes is becoming such a big issue is because uh, one of the reasons is because um, it's it it's type two diabetes, which has to do with lifestyle, and it makes our body insulin resistant. So it takes more insulin. Glucose can't be absorbed to be used for energy without insulin. It's that they come as a package deal. So if you don't have enough insulin, if you don't make enough insulin or if your tissues are resistant to the insulin, which means you have to have more insulin to get the same amount of glucose into your tissues for energy, whether it's your brain or your heart or whatever, your muscle that needs the glucose for the energy. Um, So that means that uh, either way it's impaired. And when glucose is hanging around in the bloodstream, but you know, on its own, it's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be used for energy right away. So if it hangs around in the bloodstream, it causes damage. And it's kind of like having glass shards in your bloodstream. And every time your heart beats, it pops them around all over the place and they're floating around and popping the inside of the blood vessels. And that's gonna do one of two things. It's either going to scar them enough to where they sclerose. And so then we have atherosclerosis, which we know causes heart disease, or we have an injury occur where the body sends blood to that area. And then you have a blood clot there and then that blood clot can let loose and cause a stroke. And those are the problems. Most people with kidney disease, if they pass away, they pass away from usually a vascular or heart condition. So that's why we try to help them control. So I've worked a lot with diabetes prior to becoming a dietitian with Fresenius and and working with renal patients. That's all I did was diabetes for several years. And I worked with people with type one, type two, and gestational diabetes. Oh, wow. 
So what would you say, like in general, with especially with COVID coming around, has this been more difficult for to, to get patients, let's say, that are in, are in SNPs? I mean, a lot of our, the, the people that are listening to this are in uh, nursing facilities. Is that difficult to have them, the transportation coming into to the in-house care? Or do you recommend having uh, bringing in your equipment to the SNPs and, and providing it there? Okay, the um, in our particular situation, I don't know where how it's done everywhere else, but in our particular situation, the nursing homes had their own vans that were accommodating to them, and they would transport the patient from the long-term care facility to us in their own transportation. They didn't have them use the public transportation. There's public transportation that's made for medical needs and they didn't have them use that. They transported them themselves. Um, so in our situation, that was what was happening. I don't know what's, hap what's happening in other places. Um, the, and, and that worked out well for them because they could make sure that things were sanitized and done the way that they should be done. Um, our uh, patients who were in long-term care facilities were thrilled to come to dialysis because in their nursing home, they were being confined to their rooms mm -hmm. and they weren't getting to congregate during meal time. They weren't able to do as many of the activities as they would have been able to do. I understand some of them had, we have several different, uh, we have patients in several different uh, long-term care facilities. So it depended on the facility, they took care of it differently, but they might do group therapy session out and they would have them just wheel out uh, if they were in a wheelchair or they'd come out in a chair and they would come out to the doorway of their room and they would be in the hallway and they would help them do those kinds of things in the hallway as opposed, or they would come into their room. But they enjoyed, they didn't get to enjoy being around their friends and then they, of course their family couldn't come in. And so that was very difficult for them. And several of them were, had battled depression and other things yeah. because of that. So it was very difficult for them. Uh, but now in Texas, we've opened them up. We've opened up our long-term care facilities. Have y'all done that in your area yet? In Illinois, I'm not sure where exactly. Okay. Is. Well, they've opened them up now, but they're still very careful. You have to make an appointment. You know, like families have to make an appointment and plan. And they, of course, they screen them before they come in. Um, and they are only allowed to go to that specific person they're not allowed to just conquer you know to roam around the the facility um because that's their home you know so that they don't they're not letting them go all over the place so kelly the a typical patient is coming in i mean every dialysis patient comes in for three times a week for four hours at a time what sort of entertainment like how do they keep themselves busy during that time i guess besides okay. for the cheerleading <laughs> Yeah, because I can't do a cheer. I can't do a cheer pep rally for them every oh, the whole four hours. <laughs> Although that would probably be a pretty good workout. <laughs> the um, is that is that a good way to avoid being a dialysis patient? Is doing uh, being a cheerleader? <laughs> yeah, I think it might be. <laughs> Plenty of exercise. <laughs> the uh, well, I'll tell you what they have TVs that they each, they have each, each of them have an, their own TV that they can change the channel and the volume and they have little headphones that they can use. And uh, if they don't have them, we have them provided for them. And they can bring their own devices if they want to, because we have Wi-Fi that they can, you know, tap into. So they can use their own devices. Um, they have little tables that sit out, that cut, that wing out from the, that are attached to the chair. So they can put things there. The, so it's sort of uh, like an airplane, like a first class, Kind of like right. that. Yeah, kind of like that. Do they get peanuts, like a little thing of peanuts or anything? <laughs> or? Well, before COVID, there were times when we would uh, might give little snacks or whatever for them to take home. They're not supposed to eat it on the chair when they're in. We're not supposed to eat during the doing the treatment. Some people do, but they're advised not to. Uh, but in during this COVID time, nobody's been allowed to have any food brought in at all. Right. Did you um, ever think about maybe putting like a, a crying baby next to them so they really feel like they're flying? 
Well, I'll tell you what, when we did the, the cheerleader and pep rally and I was motivating them to take their medications, you know, you always have the one or two that are like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're being too loud, you know, all this. And so we just, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. So-and-so. We'll, 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 we'll calm down for you here in a few minutes, you know. <laughs> and so, and then they're fine. So I do, I do lots of different things. Like one year we had um, during, because I like football, I think I told you I like football. So we celebrate football season a lot. The, uh, we had, everybody got to wear their a shirt or a hat or both from their favorite football team, whichever it was, if it was their local team or college or professional, whatever. And we all did it. And of course, um, it was, you know, there was a lot of bragging rights and a lot of people giving, you know, giving each other a hard time over what they, their team was and all of that. And, uh, and of course, this, all the staff, we all participated. And so the patients enjoy those kinds of things. For the holidays, we do some special stuff. Um, and uh, I have a little poem for Thanksgiving that I recite and I have a special hat and I do my, my little thing, my little performance for them with that. At Christmas time, we've sung uh, Christmas carols. I had a little microphone and uh, one of the other uh, nurse educators came in and we, we did some Christmas caroling with the patients and told them to join with us and sing and that kind of thing. Uh, we, of course, we decorate up the place. Um, and we give them gifts. We give them gifts for uh, at, um, last year. I don't know what we'll do this year with COVID. I'm not sure what they'll allow us to do. But last year and the in years prior, we gave them uh, turkeys to take home or chickens that were already roasted uh, to take home. Because some of these folks don't, they may not have, some of them have families to do things with, but some don't. Right. So uh, we wanted them to have some things for them to take home. Uh, and we always give them a Christmas gift. The company gives them a Christmas gift and then the clinic itself, we usually do something extra for them and they enjoy that. Um, so we're, we're always doing something active for the patients mm -hmm. and, and giving them little coupons to take places and do all kinds of fun things. So. Yeah, Kelly, it sounds like you're really, uh, you know, people that, that are in such a difficult situation, you're really making their life uh, a lot brighter. We uh, try. And, you know, <laughs> so keep up the amazing work. I'm sure uh, it would, it's, uh, it's tough, but it's, it's enjoyable. I'm sure you see some results and see people coming home uh, a little happier. Um, so thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and give us a okay. little bit of uh, Thank you. I back. appreciate you asking. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the SNF Spotlight series. Please subscribe to our channel as there will be many new and exciting episodes from our healthcare heroes.